Hi, welcome to the Stitch TV show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilt talk show, the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. You can join us for twice monthly talk shows. We also post tutorial videos, virtual stitch ins, and book clubs. You can learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. Today, we're going to be doing a star block smackdown and discussing when to use different types of applique techniques. We're joined by our quilt Lucky Star. The pattern for this quilt is available at shop.thestitchtvshow.com. And our show today is brought to you by our friends at Inmark and QT Fabrics. And you can learn more about the links in our show notes. So we are back with our Speckles fabric. Speckles. I kind of want to turn it upside down to look at all the other ones. Well, then we can do that. <gasps> Amazing. Live action. Yeah, there you go. Maybe turn it on the side. Ooh, fancy. My favorite's the blue. Uh, We're not surprised. Hey, did you see where Pantone came out yes. with its new color? Classic blue. Classic blue is the new color of 2020. We're going to be seeing lots of blue stuff. Class Sadly, no classic blue in our thread bundle today, but we have some available with that. So this is the Inmark Absolutely. Ultra Bright Absolutely, no regrets has the blue in it for sure. And then my quilting assortment right. has some blues. Mm -hmm. I think I like the Smurf blue best. The Smurf it's blue. Very this looks like Smurf blue. Yep. So I like it. Only one orange, so that's kind of sad. But you get orange in all the other ones. See, like, speckle, speckle, speckle. I know. So orange is everywhere. Mm. Anyway. So... So we're doing a star block smackdown. Okay. You're going to have to explain exactly how we're going to do this. I mean, I know what a smackdown is because we've done it with her before, but it's always been in a, a guild setting. A guild setting. So I don't know how you're envisioning this now. <laughs> so what we had done in our guild was put out a prompt and say, okay, everybody, go make a pinwheel block. Like interpret that block, make one, bring it in. And then we did like a bracket vote system kind of in the u.s we have like sweet 16 is the most common bracket it's college basketball and you start off with like there's kind of random pairings of teams and then you know you go from 16 and the winners from those eight matches get down to eight and then from those eight you get four matches and then kind of on down until there's like one winner right and so when we were talking about, hey, what topics we have, star blocks are very popular in the quilt world. And I got to thinking, well, what's the better star block? What is that? And so I put together a little bracket and we get to figure out how do we want to judge these? Because I know okay. how I would judge. How would you judge star blocks for quilting? Okay. What? So that's so vague. You know how you said on the last show, that topic is so vague. Yes. I feel like it's so vague. Um, like, cause you could talk about the construction, not only the yeah. technique, but do you like making it easy, ease of construction? You know, sometimes I'm attracted to blocks because they look hard. Yeah. They are challenging. So I think that's, you know, more attractive to me, um, because of that. Uh, and then how well, once it's done, you know, execution of it. Did they make all the, did they cut off their points? Did they, you know, then you get into judging of like their technique. It's the person who made its technique. Yeah, but we're not looking at finished blocks. We've got illustrations of blocks. Right. So there's a graphic on screen of kind of eight star blocks that we're going to be talking about. And so from my perspective, I think ease of construction goes into it. I think versatility, like, do I feel like I could, make this block my own could I, you know not just with fabric placement but could i enhance some elements can i swap out the center does it look cool you know when you start applying different fabrics in different positions right or does it get or are you so focused on how this block is made right. that you feel kind of limited so i was thinking versatility okay. and quilts okay so so our first pairing are kind of two similar looking blocks. We have Sawtooth Star, yes. which is an eight-pointed star, and an eight-pointed star. <laughs> now, the Sawtooth Star is typically made with like flying geese units for yes. the points, and the eight-pointed star uses a V block for the points. So the center is smaller in the eight-pointed yes. star because you get the tall V block. Yeah, so the points and the center are the same in the eight-pointed star. In the Sawtooth Star, you get a fatter center. Yes. 
So, I mean, okay. So if you were going to make a quilt of only these two blocks, which would you rather work with? <laughs> okay. I, well, that, okay, right there is number one, Got hot. I've got hives on. Because I rarely make a quilt with the same block in it that all looks the same. Like, that to me is boring. Okay, let's say you're going to add a second block to okay. be determined later. Okay. Which do you if think I would, add... would play nicer with others? Mm. Mm. If I were using a bigger focus fabric or, like, I really wanted to do selective cuts and it had... Um, you know, larger elements that I wanted to be a part of that, the Saw Two Star would play better. But for attractiveness, I like the Eight Point Star. Uh -huh. So I would pull the Eight Pointed Star because I like that it doesn't look even. I like that it's it could be seen more as off kilter. Mm -hmm. That to me is more attractive than the Saw Two Star. Which would you choose? The construction, and why? the construction of the eight point star. Those V blocks drive me bananas. Oh, they drive me bananas too. I lose too, points but... on at least half of them, <laughs> or I have made it in such a way that there's too much float in the background. So, like, my point is not going all the way to the edge. To edge, yeah, yeah. It just drives me bananas. So I you think would rather do the saw two star just for ease of construction. I appreciate the symmetry of the eight point star. I appreciate the But I like the flexibility of the sawtooth because you could you could do like a big focus fabric you could. or you could be like, I'm going to throw a four patch in there. I'm going to throw a nine patch in there. You can throw a four patch in the eight point star. It's very small. <laughs> I like small stuff. I mean, you know me. Like I will shrink stuff down. She gets on to me because I'll be like, we can do six inch blocks. And she's like, no, no, we cannot live. <laughs> six inch box with 24 pieces in them. No. <laughs> You're welcome to make whatever kind of quilt you want. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> so I would I would go for the eight point star. Okay. Is that what you're going for? Uh, well, how are we gonna get to the winner? I mean, you have passionate feelings. I appreciate both. I'm fine going passionate feelings. We're gonna call eight point star the winner. Eight point star is the winner. Woo! I always have passionate feelings, so <laughs> this is not going to go well. Okay, so next up is the classic Friendship Star, which is made with half square triangles for the points. Yeah. And then a Kansas City Snowflake, which again is V-blocks, but this time kind of inverted. And then you have an hourglass block in the middle. And I know it's called a snowflake. I was like, really? Kansas City? That looks like a star. <laughs> Well, okay. I know I don't care for the friendship star <laughs> at and, all. And why not? Because to me, it doesn't look like a star. It looks like a a sad square that got poked at or something. <laughs> it does. I've never, that is, and I've taught a class that's in our postcard class. And I did it because it's easy to do, and it's great for beginners. And I've taught this block before. But, oh, it, if you're asking me for my heart, no. I don't. I, it's just a boring block. Not. I'm not excited about the Friendship Star ever. I appreciate it for its simplicity, but I am also a fan of the Kansas City Snowflake. So All we right. got a clear winner there. Kansas City Snowflake it is. All right. Okay, next up is the complicated bracket. <laughs> we got a lone star. Yeah. We got a feathered star. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know why you put those two up against each other. Because they're both complicated. Oh, man. Okay, so um, you go first. I went first the last okay, two times. Um, you tell me. I like the real estate of the feathered star, but I have to take it in moderation. Because that's a lot of really tiny points <laughs> to make all those little feathery bits. It is. That, that's why that's an advanced piecing class I right know. there. It is. It's a precision piecing class. If you want a precision piecing class, take one that they're teaching you how to do the feathered star. That said, like, I like Lone Star quilts. I've made them before. Um, for construction, I've been more successful at feathered star. 
I like that as a look. I like that you can get that real estate in the center and still have something attractive and also add the fussy bits. So for me, the feathered star is the winner. <laughs> I've made several Lone Star quilts. She got one going right now. I got one on the wall right now. Um, and I have made feathered star block. Block. <laughs> block. Block. Notes on there. None. Um, I like the feathered star block. However. However, <laughs> it's not versatile. The Lone Star is far more versatile in the color placement, the choice, the quilting in it. I have more vision of what I could do for the Lone Star. It can take on a variety of different um, feels. Like, it can go from a very traditional look to a very modern look. Um, I think it has more powerful color stuff, um, and the Feather Star doesn't. The Feather Star, to me, reads very traditional. It's a beautiful block. I like all the little fussy pieces in it. It looks very traditional to me. I'm so you don't think star. you could make a modern feathered star? I think you could, but I have such, I really enjoy, and you know I've made, what, five Lone Stars? Mm -hmm. Or Broken Lone Stars, or variation of those. And the one I'm working on now, it will be a gift. It probably will already be gone by the time this shows, unless I keep it and we film it for our next one. Mm -hmm. That may be it. You may not get it right away. <laughs> You don't even know we who got you needs. are. We got needs. <laughs> um, <laughs> that being said, I I just, and maybe I just love the Lone Star look, and so that's probably why I'm passionate about it. I th you could do some stuff with a Feathered Star. I don't know. It would be a challenge, definitely. See, I've already got some creative juices flowing with the Lone Star, so there's already that. So... <sighs> I think the Feather Star would be a challenge to make it more modern or more. Not that it couldn't be done, and there are people out there who would definitely do it well, but I don't know. It just, it's very traditional. Mm -hmm. Every time I see a Feathered Star, honestly, it's always in 1800 root production fabrics. So in my brain, it's a very traditional block. Interesting. Normally you like a challenge. That's true. I do. <laughs> Baby. All right. Let's go for it. How can I make the feathered star modern or not 1800 reproduction? I don't think it's just changing the colors, though, because you have such little bits of color. Mm -hmm. I still think it'll read very traditional. Where the Lone Star, you can swirl it. You can do all kinds of cool stuff with it. Let's skip. Let's go to the next one. I don't want to vote. Okay, we're going to... Because I think we're tied there. I, I don't think we think are. Because I've don't. got feelings that I will defend. Okay. <laughs> so we may have like a three-way coming up. So like the winner of this next bracket is going to take on both the Lone Star and the Feathered Star. Uh, okay. Okay. So we have a Lemoyne Star. I still think we'll be in the same boat. Yeah, well. Lemoyne Star, which is an eight-pointed star. Yeah. Typically done using Y-seams, but can be done without Y seams. Yes. And then a six pointed star, which is basically six diamonds that come together. Right. Both of these have, you know, stars come together in the center. Which I've seen that Star of Bethlehem or yeah. Star of David. It's, I've seen where you could like split the diamonds yeah. lengthwise and you get some dimension to it. Yeah. I've seen it called different things. I've done a lot of English paper piecing as six pointed stars for the quilt that I've been That's working the on. problem with uh, to me with that one the six pointed star there is no getting away from the Y seam. Yeah. You have not. to do a Y seam. Somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah. And the Lemoyne star, you don't. You can get away with it. I know. I think the Lemoyne star is a winner. Just <laughs> like I've done the six pointed. It looks beautiful. I don't need to do it again. I, the only time <laughs> I want it, I do want to do the six pointed star because I do want to do a seven sisters quilt. And that is seven little six pointed stars in that group. And I love that quilt for some reason. If I were going to do a reproduction, that's the one I want to do, not the Feathered Star. So I'm going to vote Lone Lemoyne Star on that one, too. As am I. We got a Lemoyne Star. Now we're back to the Feathered Lone. All right. So let's put a Lemoyne Star against a Feathered or a Lone Star. 
See, okay. A Lemoyne uh, star is like the center of the Lone Star, to be honest. Is. It is. It totally is. So I think at its essence, I would say the Lemoyne star beats either of those two bracket, either of those other two fancy complicated ones. Wait, you're going to throw out my favorite star because the Lemoyne star beats it? This okay, is my perspective. Go, go, go up on the, go, let's talk at the top mm -hmm. of the bracket again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So winner from our first bracket, eight-pointed star. And Here. we're going to have this on a graphic too, right? Yes. Okay. Spiky bits against the Kansas City Snowflake. So eight points versus four points. Both of them use V-blocks, so that is no longer <laughs> a differentiator. I like the eight point. Really? Because I like Kansas City <laughs> Snowflake better. We knew this was going to happen. Yeah, we totally knew this was going to happen. <laughs> I like the eight point star. You want that to be like the best star block ever because that's where we're heading with this. Oh, well, that one's not going to win the whole thing, but it'll get to the mm -hmm. it'll get to the semifinals. Mm -hmm. Will it? Yeah, I think I got the pin. <laughs> <laughs> reach it, Lynn, reach it. <laughs> <laughs> I think the refs were paid. So. But think of it this way. If you put an hourglass in the middle of the Kansas City snowflake, or in the middle of the eight-pointed star, flip it around, that's what you got. You got a Kansas City snowflake. I know. So the, do the eight-pointed star. Why? Because you could put an hourglass in the middle. It's more versatile than that one. It's the same, it's the same block. It's the same block with an hourglass in the middle of it. Those two would look good in a quilt, by the way. They totally would. We should do that. <laughs> <laughs> I will accept your argument, and I will put an eight-pointed star and move on to the semifinals. All right. Semifinals, eight-pointed star. Woo! I think it was that excited the first time. <laughs> oh, the feather, the load star. We're going to have to make a decision. All right. Defend the feathered star, because I'm not there yet. I think a feathered star gets beat by a Lemoyne star, but not by a lone star. I feel like I'm making a deal here. <laughs> like, but the feathered star is the Lemoyne star. No, the lone no, star. No, the Le Lemoyne star is the lone star. It's the center of it. I know, but I like the focus on that element. All right. Ugh. I'm giving in. So this was a tie. And then Lemoyne. So for our final. The Lemoyne star versus the, the eight point, point star. star. Lemoyne. Eight point. <laughs> <laughs> you said it wasn't going to win the whole thing. <laughs> well, you talked me into the Lemoyne star down here. You think the Lemoyne star should beat an eight point star? Yes. Lemoyne stars are difficult by themselves they without are. Y seams. They are. But the eight point star is no slouch either because you got all those weird pointy bits. Yes, but the eight point star is more virtual, versatile. You can put in the hourglass, you can put in a checkerboard, you can put in a square and a square. You can put in another um, star. You got nowhere to go with Lemoyne. It's just a star. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like everyone in the audience is just yelling right like, now. Like, oh my gosh, Lemoyne, Lemoyne. You should have kept the sawtooth in. <laughs> That's what they're yelling. <laughs> Thank God they got rid of the friendship. Oh. <laughs> star. Friendship star. This <laughs> took a dark turn. <laughs> it did take a dark turn. <laughs> I totally didn't mean it either. That is not what I meant. All right. In the annals of the stitch lore. Okay. Okay. Before, okay. Before we decide, <laughs> eight point versus Lemoyne. Was there a contender that I missed in here that you want to throw in for, like, a wild card? Hit us, hit us with some graphics, because I know you did some research. Because I'd be willing to throw one of these over for something in your pile. 
Okay. <laughs> In a classic come from behind story. The Star of the East. It's not that one. <laughs> <laughs> the Star of the East. That's an eight pointed star. Which is the Lemoyne star. star. Yeah. Only with sides to it. Yeah. It just, no. Doesn't help? Nope. Okay, wait a minute. She's pulling out her receipts. <laughs> no, no, no. I've got. The Southern Star. Da, da, da. That's way too hard. It is totally. I'm not piecing hard. circles, girl. No. <laughs> not pieces. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. The Rolling Star. That's a Lemoyne Star. <laughs> BT Dubs. The Star of Bethlehem. I would make that one the winner. And it's the Lemoyne Star. Perfect. And we won. <laughs> Ta da! So I think we have agreed the Lemoyne is a versatile block lens. <laughs> Brought it back around. <laughs> we should also agree that it is not an easy block to do. That is true. Still like the eight point. But she's right. Lemoyne is good. Thank God the feather got beat. <laughs> that was close. Real dodgy. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. Wild card entrant. Mm. All right. Star Bethlehem. Star Bethlehem is the winner. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to take a closer look at Lucky Star Quilt, which we'll be right back. All right, we're back, and we are going to talk uh, about applique application. Yes. So there are many <laughs> different types of applique. Right. Fusible, needle turn, reverse, like all, all of these different construction right. techniques. Right. And what someone wrote in the notes was, hey, when should you use all those things? When you want to. That. And Not we're done. Great. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. Today's episode has been brought to you. <laughs> so for, for me, a lot of it comes down to my comfort with the durability of my hand stitches, which is pretty low, <laughs> to be honest. That's why I don't do really hand applique for anything other than a wall hanging. I think, and I admire these women who do the Baltimore album type applique um there is a skill set to it yes it is incredible to look at um but those quilts should be treasured and protected and not washed a million times it's not a it's not a type of um application of applique that you want to be drugged through the mud or you know you're not giving you're not spending 300 hours applicating a baltimore album quilt and giving it to a three-year-old <laughs> just that they use you know um so yeah i totally agree with that yeah. now that said generally i wouldn't put applique on a quilt that's going to get a lot of wash because I have also found and it's probably me not using the right fusible but even my fusible sometimes doesn't mm -hmm. hold with repeated washing and I make a lot of utility quilts well and I think that you know a lot of times babies newborns get a lot of applique quilts because that's what's cute they want the theme to be applique on there so you see I want a quilt with elephants on it or I want a quilt with panda bears or I want you know my my sister was she wanted a koala bear a koala it's not a bear sorry sorry Australia koala quilt and so I did an applique fused koala now it hung on the wall though yeah you know but I made her a separate quilt that was just all flannel and it was very much utilitarian and you know that's the one that was washed and used and stuff like that so I guess the answer to that is, what are you going to use it for? We say this a lot, I think. Yeah. What are you going to use it for? 
Is it um, fused? Another thing that you can do that I think a lot of people don't realize, but there's an applique technique with machine that you actually turn the edges under and do a zigzag. Mm-hmm. Um, you and I have both done it. It's Sharon Schomburg's method. Um, what does she call it? Uh, it's just applique, I guess. Yeah, I, I just it's just her method. It her method. Of, yeah, her method of applique, but it's where you actually um, you turn and starch the edge over a piece of it's like it's almost interfacing yeah that when it gets wet it kind of just turns into fiber it doesn't stay stiff it gives some dimension to it Mm -hmm. without necessarily adding like bulk and weight which is good so i think if you wanted that turned look but wanted to be used more Mm -hmm. her method may be the right method now she does recommend a monofilament thread right and you have to use the right one that doesn't feel like fishing line. <laughs> oh, absolutely not. That's horrible. Yes. Don't use fishing line in your sewing machines. No. Ever. No, but even stuff that's called monofilament thread just still kind of feels like it. Yeah. So just don't. <laughs> um. So I will caution you, though, because I did this this week. Oh, no. Dun, There's dun. a do is... As we say, not as we right, did. <laughs> exactly. So um, I wanted to make this little sign. It said, so many days till Christmas. And so I thought I would cut out the font in the uh, fused mm-hmm. on my, I have a cutter. Like a digital cutter thingy? I have a digital cutter thingy. And um, so what you want to be cautious about, and this did cut it out, and I could have glued this all down but you'll notice that was so fussy Mm. because the font was so small and i think what you need to pay attention to if you have a quarter inch or smaller anything font vine um tiny flower stem tiny flower stem whatever you know it may not be the best to use a digital cutter to cut that out. One and two fused applique may be a nightmare for you. It feels like it would separate very easily if you just tugged on it once oh. the paper came off. Well, not only that, but like this is the D for days or whatever. Uh-huh. And you can see the top. It's only held together by maybe four threads. Yeah. And you've got to peel the. Now you've got glue there, but you've got to peel the paper away. Um, and then when you stitch over that, it feels like the needle's going to hit the middle of the fibers and just make them go. Oh, Poof. it will. It will. So anytime you're doing what I would never do for applique, and I didn't pay attention when this was being cut, is anything, anytime the it's a quarter of an inch or smaller, don't do it. Especially with fuse. But I don't know how you do that with needle turn either. A quarter of an inch, little tiny. tiny. This is where you get out markers. <laughs> and you draw that in. <laughs> India ink will be your friend. <laughs> um, and that's what I ended up doing on this. I actually used the chalkboard fabric and I chalked it in because it. I could draw a line faster than I could. And that was just not going to work. Yeah. And y'all can see the finished element on a video. Link right up there. Right. And that was not going to work. So, you know, I'm not saying don't try it. Try it. But you can see I still mess around with stuff all the time. Yeah. And now, fail. I fail. If you had used, say, <laughs> a batik fabric that has a tighter weave than a traditional cotton, would it have same results? Would it have been a little better? A little better, but same results yeah. because you're dealing with such a small kind of edge. Now, there are, I just used a wonder under for my fused here Mm -hmm. um i think if you would have done steam seam two it would have finished sealed the edge Mm -hmm. and it could have been better a heat and a bond could have been better um because it's got a different glue and that glue's stronger um i'd have to play with it yeah but i just if i found it if you're dealing with stuff too small you're just going to get those weird frayed edges. I mean, you're talking about, and not just not just because a machine cut this. I mean, if you're trying to cut something that small, too. Yeah, even by hand with very sharp scissors. Right. 
That's just don't grab them out of the craft drawer. No, <laughs> and, and by that's craft not drawer, the... I mean the ones that the kids use. Yeah, like with the dull points. My adult craft drawer, very different. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, do you find? I mean, are there certain types of application that you steer clear of, or? So when I'm using applique for just an accent on what is mostly a piece to quilt, like, oh, I'm going to put a monogram. As you should, every time. I will turn the edges under and stitch it down. Right. Because to me, it's like if it's a you know, 95% pieced background and I'm just like putting an accent on there, right. I will turn the edges under. I won't do um, fusible. Sometimes that's easier. Yeah. and And especially if it's... If it's like a very large letter, which is typically, it's like a, you know, 12 inches high. So it's not like a little teeny one. Yeah. And it's, there's a lot more room to kind of get in and get the corners right. And it's not yes. quite as fussy. Right. But typically I'm not doing a lot of applique as much as you do. Oh, right. Um, yeah. And I probably will get into that more because yeah, I've been sitting, looking at my living room, like, I've had this weird tapestry there, and I could probably just make a quilt that would go there, and it would be cool if that looked like X. And that design in my head is applique. Yeah. I think, yeah, it was dangerous. I was washing dishes. Rarely do I do that. I was standing at the sink washing dishes, and I was like, oh, look, there's open wall space. <laughs> that should be filled. <laughs> so it's bad when you look around your house go, there. wait, there's nothing right there on that wall. That we could add something. So I've been doing a lot of smaller projects lately because I wanted to fill wall space. Like I've got a hallway coming down to the basement. It's going to have a lot of quilts in it. In my brain, there's a lot being done. <laughs> in my brain. <laughs> they haven't all come out like in real life yet, but they're in my brain. So that's what I know. Stay away from little small stuff. Who are you going to give it to? I think that's really hand applique is for, but heirloom the people, pieces, I heirloom think. pieces, and the people who enjoy doing it love it. They find it relaxing. They find it, you know, and for them, it's a bucket quilt. You know, yeah. it's one of those, I want to do a Baltimore album esh quilt and I'm going to hand applique or. You know, I've seen these that where they do all the, I've seen them do baby quilts with the ark and all the, yeah. the animals coming out of it. You know, that's great. Do it. Enjoy it. Just who are you going to give it to? What's its purpose going to be? And make sure they understand. How many times is it going to be washed? Yeah. That's the key kind of thing, you know. I'm not saying that there's quilts out there with dirt in it from 200 years ago, but there is. <laughs> Do you change how you quilt if you've used a different applique method, like fusible versus like a turned edge? Do you quilt that differently? No. I don't. And is that because you're just quilting the background space and leaving the applique unquilted? Uh, no, I do quilt applique. Um that would be that being said, I'm trying to think if I've done I've only done a few turned edge pieces and I and I don't think I've quilted them. So I can't answer that truthfully, I guess. I can answer it in that I haven't done it. But I don't see me hand applique hand applique. Usually they've gone in and added any of the, if it's something like it's a big piece, they've gone in and added embroidery. They've gone in and added the lines. And nine times out of ten, those things are hand quilted. Yeah. You know, if you're spending that much time, you're probably going to hand quilt it anyway. Not all of them, and they don't have to be, but I've not done it, so I don't know. Hmm. I don't think I would, but it would depend on what they've already done. Don't you think? Well, I think on the size of the shapes being used, too. So when yeah. I think of when I've done applique on a piece to quilt and I have a design, it's usually by the fabric and the I'm like quilting kind of to the piece. In that monogram, I'm leaving the applique shape primarily unquilted so it'll pop. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, and when I think of, you know, I had done a Baltimore album quilt, but I did it as Fusible. It was a Halloween Baltimore album from oh, P3 right. Designs. Yeah. And I did go and for the most part, I just outlined right on the outside of those shapes after they were stitched down. Yeah. Now I've done a McKenna Ryan pattern, which also done as Fusible. And that again was gone and quilted with monofilament and it's, and for that one, I like went rogue. I didn't stitch down the applique before I quilted it. I used the quilting as the stitching for it. And right. so it was, I had to quilt every piece or it would, might, you know, peel off. That would not be good. No. And I know theoretically, like, fusible should not do that because, you know, it should fuse. But apparently yeah, I, can. I'm not always manufacturer well, friendly with the instructions. It just depends on the fusible and yeah. the manufacturer and all that stuff. Yeah, it does. So... Do what you want. You can use the different application methods for lots of different uses. But just be aware of the consequences. If you wash it a hundred times. If you wash anything a hundred times, to right. be honest. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Well, there you go. Did you have passionate feelings about our Starblock Smackdown? Do you <laughs> want to defend a choice? Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> Please email Lynn at... No. <laughs> <laughs> Leave a comment on our blog or on the YouTube episode or even in our Facebook group, What's Up Stitches. And that's all we have for this episode. Today's show is made possible by Inmart and QT Fabrics. Find links to these wonderful companies in the show notes for today's episode. We'd like to thank 77 Peaches and Big Think Productions for helping produce the stitch. If you've enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on notifications on YouTube. More info about our show, as well as links to purchase fan gear, online classes, and quilt patterns can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com. Tune in next time for more quilting chat with friends.